today. Thank you for, for being with us here this morning. We're, we're so glad that you're here. I'm so glad to, to be here as we begin a new message series together and we fight the technical gremlins here in Woodstown High School this morning at Illuminate Church. All right. Right? So, how's everybody doing today? Great. We're going to dive into some, some new teaching content today. Uh, I'll start like this with a, a little bit of a story. When I was a kid, my parents would take us to, to Disney World quite often, my sister and I, and when they would take us there, I guess that is a young me there on the, the screen doing the light pop, right? I don't know what quite know what's going on, but like, I was working it. Right? So they would take us there, and when they would take us, they would dress us in bright colored clothing a lot. There my dad and I are rocking some like matching neon pink shirts going on. Because they wanted us to stand out in the, the crowd. They wanted us to be easily identifiable. And so because I love you all so much, I'm going to show you another pic of Young Me and Disney so that you can have a laugh at my expense. Here it comes. Look at that. I mean, look at that kid. I mean, I'm literally wearing like a pastel jumpsuit onesie thing, right? And I'm rocking one of the, the sweetest pair of shades you've ever seen in your life. And I will say that over the years, like, my shoe game has improved a little bit, right? Because I'm rocking like the, the toddler version of some like orthotics in that picture. How could you lose somebody like that in a crowd? And no, I'm not talking about for some of you eagle-eyed viewers that the fact that my parents appeared to have me tethered to a leash in that picture, right? I'm talking about like that whole ensemble is just something that you wear to stand out, right? It's something that you wear to be noticed. If I rolled up on a Sunday morning wearing that now, like you would notice me, right? I would stand out. Just wait for next Sunday. <laughs> and so today we're, we're beginning a, a brand new sermon series or, or message series all about this same concept, all about this concept of, of standing out. You see, the, the chameleon is the master of disguise. No matter what environment it's, it's placed in, it'll change its color to, to fit in. But here to illuminate, we believe that one of the, the fundamental aspects of being a, a Christian is that we should be easily identifiable. That we're called to, to stand out from the world that's uh, around us. And no, I don't mean that we're called to, to stand out from the world around us like those super weird churchy people who act like they've never encountered people in actual social settings before. You know what I'm talking about? Right, the, the, that guy at Cowtown who hands you the tracks and asks if you've been going to heaven? That's not what I'm saying you should become. I'm not talking about like the keyboard warrior Christians who, who kind of sit there on our social media platforms and, and post this super religious stuff and start to judge other people. That's not the type of stand out I'm talking about. What I'm saying is this, that people should be able to look at the way that we live our lives and know that something about us is different. They should be able to tell that we've encountered Jesus and it's changed the way we live. And yet the truth for so many of us is that we would rather blend in with the crowd than stand out from it. The truth for so many of us is we become cultural and Christian chameleons. And so today I want to look at a, a very clear statement from the Bible as we begin this series together. A very clear statement about this fundamental bedrock belief that as Christians we're called to stand out in our, our world. And so if you have your a Bible with you or your phone with you, open up to Romans chapter 12 with me. I'm going to read the, the second verse there. And I'm going to ask you to highlight it because it's something we're going to hone in on over the next several weeks. Here in this book written by a, a guy named Paul, one of the early influencers of the, the Christian faith in Romans 12 too, he very simply says this, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed 
by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I'll read it uh, again because it's really going to become our anchor verse over the next several weeks. Paul writes, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and, and perfect will. And so it's in this sentence that Paul shows us the contrast that we're going to begin to unpack today. This contrast of fitting in versus standing out. I think there's, uh, there's times in all of our, our lives where we can be a little bit of a chameleon, right? I mean, think about it. Is, is the you at work the same as the, the you at home? Are you the exact same person on a, a night out of the, the town, so to speak, with your friends that you are when you're staying in with your kids or your family? When I was thinking about this concept of, of becoming a chameleon, adapting to our surroundings, I couldn't help but think of this space that we worship in. I don't know about you, but for me, high school was like the height of my chameleon experience. <laughs> Fitting in for, for me in high school was something I was pretty focused on. I mean, just think about that in your life for a second if you can remember back that far. Right? I know for some of you it's been a while. That's right. For others, I was like, Caleb, it was literally yesterday. Right? But when I think about high school, one of the, the things I think about is I remember feeling like the only way I could re maintain a good number of my friendships was conforming my personality and my habits to the people around me who I was friends with who were popular. And it gave me this, this sense of community because I had this group of people who I shared all of my interests with. The only problem was this, they weren't really my interests. Right? We all liked the same things. We dressed the same way and so we had this community but it was a false community. The only reason I was accepted was because of the person that I was pretending to be. And so once these people would discover who I, I actually was, then those friendships would begin to deteriorate. That community would begin to deteriorate. I was fearful that if I showed who I really was, the people would leave. God doesn't want us to have false sense of community in our lives. In fact, God gives us community of an entirely different kind. He tells us that we are set apart. Why? For Him. He gives us a calling as, as followers of Christ that we are to stand out in the world rather than just fit in or, or blend in. He says this is how people will know something different about you. This is what we have when we encounter Jesus. But before we can learn how to stand out before we can learn how to be transformed. I think we have to learn what it looks like to conform in our lives. I mean, what does conforming even look like? <clears throat> what are the patterns we as real everyday people experience? What are the temptations that we're we're led to change who we are, to, to become. What does transformation in our lives by the, the grace and blood of Jesus look like? What's the purpose behind it? Why is it so important? And I think the first step to answering that cascade of questions is stripping away this idea and boiling it down to this, this idea of conforming. We need to get a grip on what it looks like to conform to our current the word conform means to, to be similar or identical. I remember when I was, was younger, when I was still wearing pastel jumpsuits and those wicked sunglasses and the toddler version of the orthotics, I would go to kindergarten then. They'd let me off the leash for that. Right? I'd go to kindergarten then, and, and in kindergarten class, we would play with, like, Play-Doh. Right? And, and sometimes our, our teacher would make a shape with her Play-Doh, and then show it to us, and it was your job to make the same shape, right? To model your little mound of Play-Doh after her little 
mound of, of Plato. And so what we were doing is we were trying to essentially replicate what she had formed. And so as I thought about this idea of conforming, I thought, well, I think that's the lowest possible denominator or example I can think of. Right? Where somebody does something, and then you seek to replicate it, to do it the, the same way. I think very simply, that's what conforming looks like in our world. We, we look at the example of what somebody else has done, and we mold our, our lives after that. Our, our personalities begin to to follow that. We see a, another person at work who si has been successful by doing something, and so we start to do the, the same thing because why? We want to experience the success that they have. Or we see our friends take an interest in something, and so we begin to be interested in those same things because we're afraid that if we don't share the same interest, they might replace us and find new friends. Or we see the culture around us begin to shift their beliefs and social norms and, and things that we used to believe in and we thought weren't okay, we begin to compromise on. Because we're afraid if our beliefs don't align with the world around us that we might be looked at differently. Can I confess something to you here this morning? We do it as a church too. Most of the time, I don't go as far as saying like 80% of the time, what we do here at Illuminate is because we've seen other churches do it and be successful. Right? And we've seen other churches do it and be successful in their context. And so we want to experience that same success in our context. And so what do we do? We model our model after their model. That's what our lives look like so often, don't they? In so many ways, as I thought about it this week, as I was writing, in so many ways we were, we were taught how to make shapes that way, but we've never really outgrown that Plato exercise in our lives. The stakes have changed, yes, the, the way we do it has changed, but it's still the, the way we live our lives. We look at the world around us, and then we shift the course of who we are to try and become the, the person we think we need to be to fit our desired outcomes. So why do we do that? I think it's because we've bought into a false pattern in our lives. We've bought into these false patterns in our lives and these patterns that, that we've fallen into, they lie to us, they tell us that if you just change yourself a little bit, you can achieve this. If you just change yourself a, a little bit, well, that becomes possible. If you just give up what you believe a little bit, you'll be more accepted by the people around you. But here's the truth this morning. Those things, those lies, they look glamorous, but they only ever offer us temporary satisfaction. <laughs> you see, the first thing we need to realize today is that the false patterns in our lives don't allow a lie the promise that we've been given. Amen. Here's the, the promise that I'm talking about. That when you encounter Jesus in your life and the things of this world begin to fade, your life becomes better than it ever was before. Amen. That's a biblical and scriptural promise. When you encounter Jesus in your life and the things of this world begin to fade, then your life becomes better than it ever was before. Now I want to be really clear here this morning. I didn't say your life becomes easier than it ever was before. I didn't say you were suddenly going to make more money than you ever did before. I didn't say when you encountered Jesus that God was going to bless you and all your problems were suddenly going to go away. If you want that kind of prosperity gospel, I'm sorry this isn't the place for you. Right? Because I'm just trying to keep it real up here. But what I can say is that when you encounter Jesus and the things of this world begin to fade, your life becomes better than it was before. Amen. If you were with us last week for Easter, you, you watched online or, or caught it, the message on demand throughout the, the week. You know, we talked about this story where Jesus encounters a, a woman in the midst of her brokenness who's living a, a false 
pattern in her life. And so if you didn't catch it last week or, or you, you just missed it, I'm just going to give you a quick recap here this morning. In John chapter 4, Jesus has this encounter with a Samaritan woman at the well. You see, in Jesus' culture, he was a Jew and they didn't associate with Samaritans. In fact, they did everything in their power to avoid interactions with them. However, Jesus, as he so often does, looks to rewrite that story. And so he goes to meet this woman. This woman he meets in the, the middle of the day who's come to the, the well. She's come much later in the day, in the heat of the day, because she's ashamed of the lifestyle that she's been living and she wants to avoid encounters with anyone. Here's the thing though, you can't avoid an encounter with God when he wants to show up in your life. But Jesus, Jesus meets her at the well. He, he meets her there and he chats her up and he offers her living water. He makes her aware that the lifestyle that she's been living will never truly fulfill her. Will always leave her thirsty, always leave her wanting more, always taking her from a, a place of gratification to a place of shame and brokenness. He says to her, the fact is, in your life you've had five husbands and the guy that you're sleeping with now isn't your, your husband at all. Jesus calls out this false pattern that he's been living in, or she's been living in her life. And I think that's important for us to understand that he doesn't just skip over the brokenness. He calls it out. He acknowledges and says, you don't have to be like that any longer. He offers a, a, her a better way of life that is only found in, in Christ. You see, it's not that her life would suddenly get easier. It's not that those patterns in her life were suddenly going to break. There was still some stuff, some crap she was going to have to deal with on the other side of that. But what it meant is that her life after she encountered Jesus was no doubt going to be better than it was before she met him. You see, the only way we experience true transformation in our lives is we have to first understand the negative patterns that are going on in our life. And so maybe this morning God is just trying to call some things out in your life that don't need to be there anymore. Maybe you've been following those, those false patterns of the people around you because it, it's so much easier just to fit in than it is to, to stand out there. And you know you can just keep your friendships, your, your marriage, your, your job, the status quo in your life if you just continue to follow those patterns. But I'm here to tell you this morning that no matter how much you change yourself to conform to the world around you, the payoff will only ever be temporary. Right. That's true. What I'm saying this morning is that if you don't know it, I want to tell you right now, Jesus is offering you a better way of life. Amen. He's offering you the living water that you've desired. He's offering you a payoff that doesn't stop. The opportunity to stop conforming and instead be transformed. But here's the thing. If that's going to happen in our lives, if we're going to truly be transformed, if we are going to encounter Jesus and become better for it, then our patterns have to start to align with our promise. Our patterns have to start, have to, start to align with our promise. You see, once we're able to recognize the negative patterns in our life, the, the brokenness, the things that are, are going on, it's only then that we're able to, to grow towards transformation. How? By finding a renewed rhythm. Counselors will often tell us this, that, that one way or another, we are going to experience certain patterns in our lives. If you're like me and you've ever made some really poor choices and then had to live with the consequences on the other side of that, you can probably remember it doesn't happen all at once. There's probably a, a negative pattern of behavior in your life going on that, that ultimately would lead to bigger or bigger and bigger problems. At least that's how I've experienced it. Anybody else? 
right? It, it started small, microscopic even, but then I allowed that negative pattern to, to take hold, and before I knew it, I was walking further and further and further and further down a road that I didn't even want to be on, conforming until I barely recognized who I was anymore. Do you know that that's not what God wants for your life? He doesn't want you to give in to the negative patterns that we cling to. God wants his people to, to experience a renewed rhythm of grace in their lives daily. That's why Paul tells us, he says, be transformed how? By the renewing of your minds. So we talked about what conforming looks like. But what does it look like to be transformed? The dictionary definition of this, this idea of transformation is a dramatic change in form or appearance. That means when God meets us, when he encounters us, he wants us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. He wants us to be changed dramatically. One of the, the things that little boy in the pastel jumpsuit, the six shades in the orthotics liked to play with as a kid was something called Transformers. Right? What they were, they were, like, they were these awesome toys that were really two toys in one. Like you'd get a, a toy for your birthday and you'd open it and it would look like a normal car and that's awesome all by itself. But then you would start to play with it, you'd hit a couple buttons, open some stuff up, and before you knew it, you had this awesome little robot dude who had completely changed. And you couldn't really even tell that he was a car anymore. As I, I thought about that, as I, I reminisced in my own life, I, it brought me to this scripture that we read in 2 Corinthians 5 where it says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become what? A new person. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. The old life is, is gone, and the new life has become, or begun. It means that once we encounter Jesus, he naturally wants us to start living a different way than we were living. And here's the, the thing, let's be real and honest about it right now, that's going to be uncomfortable for us most of the time. Most of the time... Encountering Jesus and coming out transformed is going to stretch us and send us to places that we don't really want to go. There are probably things going on in our lives right now that we would classify as an unhealthy pattern or rhythm that, that simply need to be broken. Need to be left behind, need to be set aside. You see, Paul not only teaches us to break the pattern, he says replace it with something that's better. We talked about it earlier. What makes your life better? Encountering Jesus. Right. That means I need to give up the things that I'm using now to get gratification from in the moment so I can embrace God who has lasting gratification for me for my future. Right. I need to identify the negative patterns in my life and then replace those patterns with renewed yeah. rhythms. And so maybe you're here this morning, or you're tuning in on, online, and you're thinking to yourself, man, I don't even know where to start. Like, you don't know me. I've got so much stuff going on in my life, I don't even know where to start. You talk about negative patterns, I can give you a laundry list of them. Or maybe you're, you're here and you're thinking, I don't even know how to identify negative patterns in my life. My world seems pretty okay right now. And so I think no matter where you are, no matter what side of the spectrum you're on, or you're probably someplace in the, the middle, the answer for all of us is the same. And it's this, you see, Paul teaches us that the world can form. But the word transforms. So I would encourage you over the next few weeks as we dive into that series. That's why I had you pull out your phones, Bibles, highlight that passage to really dive into the, the word of God. You see, God wants to transform your life, but you've got to spend some time with him to do that. And so carve out some time, even if it's just 
five minutes a day to chase after the heart of God for your life through his word. Because let's be honest, it's easy to just keep scrolling. Right, the world around us will gladly give us things that fill our, our time. And before we know it, our day has gone by and we haven't spent any time with God at all. It happens to me nearly every day. But I believe that when we spend more time with God, we encounter God more and more. And when we encounter God, our lives begin to change and transform. As Paul says we need to have our, our minds renewed. Our minds are, are wired to be filled with so many different things. And so maybe it's time for the, the rewiring of of things that we're choosing to fill our mind with. But if we're being honest, or renewing our minds, this idea of, of transformation, they're not easy concepts. Or they require hard work, they require us to stretch ourselves, they require us to confront patterns in our lives that we're not comfortable talking about. But I promise you this, it's worth it. You see, we can all look around us and we can discover how to, to fit in, but if we pause, if we pause and we both look up and look within ourselves, I think it's then that we can truly understand the art of what it means to be set aside for Christ. And so as the band comes back up this morning, I, I just want to wrap up with this. What is God trying to do in your heart as we begin this series? What kind of, of self-reflective journey do you need to embark on over the next month or so? You see, God desires to see your, your heart and your mind transformed. He, he desires to see you renewed. You're not meant to live in the burnout of the negative patterns of your lives. And we know this, we sang about it this morning, that we know that God is still moving even when we don't see Him. We know that God is still working, He's still changing hearts, He's still doing miracles in our lives. The only question is this, how badly do we actually want God's transformation for us? Over the next few weeks, are you willing to take a, a bold step of faith and allow God to begin to work in your life? Are you satisfied with being just a, another chameleon? Blending into your surroundings. Where do you fall this morning as we begin this series? Are you standing out or are you just somehow struggling to, to fit in? So over the, the next few weeks, we're really just going to chase after the heart of God in that way. How do we come up, become a people who are renewed? How do we become a people who are transformed? I invite you to, to pray with me. So God, we come to you this morning and we acknowledge that there are negative patterns of behavior in our life. In our lives. We acknowledge that there are things that we've placed above you in our lives. That there are patterns that we've fallen into that we say, you know what? That is most important to me. This is the, the thing that I'm going to get the most gratification, the most satisfaction from. God, we confess that we're wrong. We held idols above the idols of, of money and our careers and, and sports and just activities in our lives. And God, I'm so guilty of holding the idol of busyness above you. And so we come here this morning, and God, we pray that you would just take the veil off of our eyes, that we would see, God, that there is nothing better than you, God, that we can search the world around us, and we will never find anything that is better with you than you. So God, come and let us encounter you this morning. Let us encounter you in a way that doesn't make our lives easier, God, but makes our lives better for it. We love you, we praise you, we chase after your presence here right now. In 
your holy and precious name we pray.